Let's look at activation energy using a fire syringe. Wow! Oh, that is incredible. Slim Dog Science with me, Caleb Flynn. Subscribe, like, comment, and hit that bell. Similar to how you possibly started today, we will need some toilet paper. One square will do, unless of course you use a bidet, then you don't need to start your day with toilet paper. Let's put this little piece in our fire syringe. It's probably actually even too much. Let me take a little off. And then I got this nice plunger from my favorite buffet, Quando's. Now watch this. Let me turn off some lights so you can see it a little better. <laughs> That's so cool. Just smoke. Little singed. Let's try a couple other things and see if anything works better than toilet paper. Here's a Q-tip. Now let's squeeze that air. Q-tip. Trial one. Wow. Oh, that is incredible. Whoa. The cotton worked so good. Oh, man. Whoa, smells incredibly burnt. <laughs> Surprise. Let me try that again. Wow! Try to keep it pretty airy. Three, two, one. Let me try a smaller piece. Three, two, one. Whoa! That was the best one. We'll do it again. Just a tiny bit. The first one, wow, the first one was so good. <laughs> Got my glove. It hurts after a while. You bang this little top here and your hand starts to really hurt. I need to break more bricks or something. Get back to karate class. Yeah, a little singed, not terribly. So let's think about what's going on. Here's what's weird about this. Normally for a reaction to happen, we're used to adding heat to the thing to get it to go. But with this, all we're doing is squeezing a piston. So it's like, why would our little piece of paper light on fire, a little toilet paper? Cause you gotta get it to, depending on where you look around, 450 Fahrenheit, I think that's about 233 Celsius. Where's the energy come from to light this? With a lighter, where's the energy come from to light these? We know the gas light's pretty easy. There's a little little spark inside there. Let me see it real quick. Boop. Right at the end there. I'll take one apart sometime and show you how to make a fun little striker. That little spark is really hot. Like lightning is really, really hot. And that's what starts the reaction. That's providing our energy to light the little whatever our gas is, butane, propane, whatever you happen to have in there. And what about this? This is flint and steel. Got this at Pioneer Days in elementary school. Check it out. We get all those cool sparks. The friction is what's initially providing us with that energy to start the reaction. And in this case, to warm up the iron, which probably leads to it being oxidized a little bit in the process. And what about just regular matches? Where's the energy come from there? Well, depending on the match type, say you're dealing with red phosphorus, it has to get up into the mid, I think 130, somewhere right around there, Celsius in order to ignite. Where's that energy coming from? What are we doing on the box? There's some stuff on the box to help this happen, but we're doing friction. Also, friction providing the heat to get us up to our activation energy to start the reaction, which brings us back to the fire syringe. Where is the energy coming from? When you do the fire syringe slowly and just slowly push it down, it never lights, like ever. Now, I don't have huge success. It doesn't light for me every single time when I just slam it. I'm not super sure why. If you know why, let me know. You always get smoke, but it doesn't seem to always light. It doesn't get quite hot enough which is puzzling to me, haven't messed around with it enough. So it's not just squishing the volume, there's an element of doing that quickly, which probably has to do with air escaping and some other factors also. We're taking air molecules that are inside here, and when the piston gets moved down, it bumps into them, kind of like a ping pong paddle hitting a ping pong ball. If the top here is an air molecule, 
and this is the piston coming down. When the piston hits that air molecule, it bangs it and moves it. It makes it start going faster. And faster moving air molecules simply means that the temperature of them has risen because temperature is a measure of average speed, sort of kinetic energy of those air molecules. So when you bang this down really fast, in essence, what you're doing is hitting those air molecules faster. And by doing that, you increase the temperature. The activation energy is coming from hitting the air molecules speeding them up and increasing the temperature. And there's a cool relationship we can see with that if I make a graph. I think this is Charles' law. If we put temperature on the x-axis and pressure on the y-axis, then what happens? <laughs> I love that sound. What do you think the pressure's like when we push it to the bottom? It's pretty high. And we also saw that's when the toilet paper lit on fire, so the temperature was high. So let's make that data point. The temperature was high when the pressure was high. And when we're up here at the top, the temperature is not very high, so we're down here, and the pressure is also not very high. So we're right in here. So let's make that data point. And if we turn that into the variable so they make a little more sense, small pressure leads to small temperature, whereas a large pressure leads to a large temperature. And what did we have to do to the volume for that to happen? Well, here in our small pressure, small temperature scenario, our volume was very large. Whereas here in our high pressure, high temperature scenario, our volume is very small. And a way that you oftentimes see that in equation is in something like this. And that's called the combined gas law. It's pretty useful. You can do some fun stuff with it. But back to our initial thought. Let's draw what we have. Let's just say our toilet paper is a carbon-hydrogen compound. That's probably pretty true. We'll say there's some amount of carbon. It's probably just a big chain. Call that X. And there's some amount of hydrogens that are going to be attached to that. We'll say there's Y of them. And why do they react when we slam this down? Because they're reacting with oxygen. What percentage of the atmosphere is oxygen? 21%. Did you get it? Now the toilet paper could always react with oxygen. The oxygen's banging into it right now, but it's not bursting into flames because where I'm filming is freezing cold and I want to put on a big puffy jacket. My nose is probably turning red. <laughs> so we need some energy in order for the oxygen to hit the toilet paper with enough energy in order for that reaction to happen. That is activation energy. That activation energy usually just comes from a match or a lighter. And then the reaction continues on. Our toilet paper reacts with the oxygen because we brought a heat source in in order to get over that. <coughs> ah. <laughs> oh, it's smoky. Because we brought a heat source in in order, in order to get over this activation energy. In order to get over the activation energy with our fire syringe, we increase the temperature by speeding up those air molecules by banging into the air molecules with our little fire syringe here. And in the end, what did we make with both of those besides the smoke that was choking me up there? The products of complete combustion, you get smoke and soot and carbon monoxide and all these incomplete products. But if we had just perfect combustion, we would get what two products? CO2, that's carbon dioxide. And what's the other one? This one's really surprising. Sometimes, at least for me it was, water. And we can see that the starting energy that we had is higher than the energy that we end with. These are more stable products. They're less likely to react. So energy was given up and that's the flame and the heat and the fire and all that fun stuff that we see there. But our key point for today is, in order for that reaction to take place, it doesn't just happen, we need some activation energy. And that activation energy is not always the same amount. Some things don't have very much activation energy. Like, there's a reason they don't sell nitroglycerin as stump remover. Some things, you bump them and you give them enough activation energy in order for the thing to explode. So most of those things, we don't typically make too much on this platform because they're really dangerous and you might try to do them and that is, that's not good. 
So anyway, I hope that was fun. Come back again. We'll do another experiment. Uh, I'll try to link another experiment you might like. If you have an idea for me or something you want to hear more about, we could talk about combustion for a while. I'll do some more on combustion. Fire is really fun. But I'll see you soon. And as always, stay curious. And I forgot to say welcome. Welcome to Flim Dog Science. Subscribe, like, comment, hit that bell.